Hello there, my fellow 40k technicians, and welcome. Welcome to yet another brand new series of lore that I decided to start to prove that I do honor my promises. This new series is going to be focused on the weapons, armor, and war gear of the beloved Space Marines, aka Adeptus Astartes. Now, some things I will discuss here are not entirely exclusive to the Space Marines. Some of these items, like power armor, power weapons, or even bolters, are also used by the Inquisition, elite Imperial Guard soldiers, or simply very wealthy individuals. However, I will stick all of them into this playlist and series, because, well, there are no more famous nor efficient users of power armor, for instance, than the Space Marines of the Adeptus Astartes. For today's video, ironically, we are not gonna talk about a weapon, but instead power armor itself. We are going to learn a bit about its origins, design, and components. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a couple of things about power armor, shall we? Power armor is an advanced form of powered combat armor. Worn primarily by the Space Marines and the Chaos Space Marines, though other suits have been created to be worn by average mortals. It is a completely enclosed suit of combat armor, composed of shaped adamantium and plasteel plates, encased in a ceramite ablative layer. Each suit possesses a full suite of life support functions for operations in hostile environments, an automated medicay system to provide some level of first aid to a wounded wearer, and a highly advanced and fully integrated tactical targeting and threat assessment system known as autosenses. The suit would be heavy and cumbersome to wear, but for the electrically motivated fiber bundles within the armor. This replicates the wearer's movement and enhances his strength beyond its already considerable superhuman baseline. For Space Marines, that is. While power armor is most commonly associated with the Space Marines of the Adeptus Astartes, the Sisters of Battle and many Inquisitors also use power armor of some kind or another. Typically, however, these armors may not contain the same strength-enhancing properties or life support functions of Space Marine power armor, nor do they always provide the same level of protection. The last gene seed organ to be implanted in a space marine, called the black carapace, rests beneath the skin, itself fitted with neural sensors and transfusion ports. These plug-in points mesh with power armor, linking the wearer's nervous system to the suit's mind impulse controls, turning the suit into a second skin of a kind that moves with all the speed and precision of the battle brother himself. Without the Black Carapace, Space Marine armor is almost useless, and it is therefore the most distinctive feature of a Space Marine and the true mark of an Adeptus Astartes. There are several patterns, or marks, of power armor whose appearances can differ significantly. Many older marks have special associations for certain chapters, and are often worn by their ceremonial honor guards or elite units. Power armor is maintained by skilled artificers, who are not space marines, but servants who spend their lives working for the chapter. Especially talented artificers are justly celebrated, and examples of their work highly prized. Elements of ancient armor are religiously hunted down, for they carry both the history of the chapter and the deeds of heroic individuals. Such pieces are lovingly restored and painstakingly engraved with new designs. As a result, it is quite common to find power armor that combines pieces from multiple marks, every grief and gorget a recollection of mighty deeds and battles won. Power armor is fully sealed, isolating the wearer from the outside environment and protecting him from chemical or biological weapons and toxic atmosphere. It also commonly includes numerous auxiliary systems, such as radio frequency communicators, autosenses, and more. 
the advanced systems of Space Marine power armor also monitor the Space Marine's biological functions, feeding the collected medical information to the Astartes, and if necessary to the chapter's apothecaries when he is wounded. The armor's backpack contains the suit's main power source, a subatomic microfusion generator, and a backup solar power converter with 100 solar cell batteries to store the absorbed solar energy. The backpack also contains the armor's environmental and life support systems, and additional movement stabilizer thrusters for low and zero-g combat. Power armor has been in use since before the age of the Imperium, worn by the techno-barbarians that dominated Terra during the Age of Strife. It was also worn by the early genetically engineered warriors that formed part of the Emperor's retinue. This also was during the unification of Terra towards the end of the Age of Strife in the 30th millennium. In the armor's earliest incarnation, the suit was not fully sealed or life-supporting, this being unnecessary while its use was still confined solely to Terra. Over the history of the Imperium, power armor has developed into many different forms. Need, circumstances, and the recovery of new materials and lost advanced technology, so-called Archaeotech, has shaped the armor's evolution. The common image of the Emperor's Space Marines is of mighty warriors arrayed in imposing suits of armor, made of ceramite plates, adorned with a bold two-headed aquila on their chest. This pattern of power armor, dubbed the Aquila Pattern, is one of the most often seen, but is in fact one of eight distinct marks seen on battlefields over the millennia. Well, nine, I guess, if you include the recent Primaris Mark X. All of the recent types are still in active use, to varying degrees, by the existing chapters of the Adeptus Astartes. Working examples of the older marks, meanwhile, are very rare and very valued as a physical link to the glorious history of the Space Marines. They are reserved for ceremonial guards, or used as the badge of office of high-level officers. It may be noted that there appears to be a steady improvement in engineering and design over the years. However, this progress is not because of any particular invention or creativity. Rather, the changes were triggered by the gradual rediscovery of knowledge and materials from the Dark Age of Technology. Following the end of the Horus Heresy, the general stagnation of imperial culture and technology has meant that the advancements of power armor technology have been far and few between. One design feature of power armor patterns Mark VI through Mark VIII is their extreme ruggedness and high level of adaptability. It is fairly common within most Space Marine chapters to see suits combining parts originally created for three or four different patterns of suits, salvaged from dead battle brothers on the battlefield. Mark VII armor, in particular, was created with this simple modularity in mind. The many different Loyalist Space Marine chapters of the present utilize all these different power armor patterns in different ratios. Some choose to equip their Astartes with the most advanced patterns of power armor available to them, while others cherish the older patterns and seek to maintain them for as long as possible. It should be noted that the Mark I, II, and III patterns of power armor are no longer in general usage by any chapter's battle companies, and are instead extremely rare relics of any chapter lucky enough to still possess a couple of suits. Marks 2 and 3 can still be seen with some frequency among the Chaos Space Marines of the Traitor Legions. The Consecrator's Chapter, for example, which is one of the successor chapters of the Dark Angels that inherited much of the original Dark Angel Legion's equipment during the second founding, will actually avoid any suit newer than Mark VI and thus appear on the field of battle as a Space Marine Legion from the legendary days of the Horus Heresy. In many cases, only sections, or portions, of the more ancient patterns of armor remain, adapted to fit the more recent suits of Mark VI or Mark VII armors. 
However, even a single shoulder plate or gauntlet that has seen millennia of service and countless battles is a treasured relic of a chapter, bringing much honor to the Astartes who wears it. Next, I would like to go over the common components of the average power armor suit. Hopefully, this diagram here is high res enough for you to tell. All patterns of the Adeptus Astartes power armor possess the following components. The helmet. This is the armored reinforced headgear that protects the Astartes head. The auto senses. A Space Marine's helmet contains most of the armor's combat systems, all of which are referred to by one title. The auto senses. These include thought activated com augers and audio filters targeting reticules and rangefinders, tactical displays and auspex links, and a host of other features that further enhance the Space Marine's already superhuman senses. The photo lenses. These are the reinforced eye guards in the helmet that protect the Space Marine from dazzling light bursts. They also allow him to see into the infrared and ultraviolet spectrums, as well as enabling vision in low light conditions. The Respirator Vox Grill The Vox Grill can amplify a Space Marine's battle cries to deafening volume. It also contains a respirator to filter out toxins and can be shot off with a thought, drawing instead upon an internal oxygen supply. The Gorget this is the part of the armor that protects the throat. The pauldron. The autoreactive shoulder guards are shaped to deflect as well as absorb incoming blows. The shoulder plates typically display Adeptus Astartes identification markings, including chapter symbols, company and squad markings, as well as many honor badges. The gauntlet. This is the armored glove that protects both the hand and the wrist. The Quisses. This is the part of the armor that protects the thigh. The Plastron. This is the armored chest plate that is designed to protect the suit's armored power cables, and more importantly, the Astartes' vital organs. It is typically adorned with the Imperial Aquila, or the Imperialis Honor, for more veteran space marines. The Quarter. This is the part of the armor that's protecting the elbow. The Vambrace. This is the part of the armor that is protecting the forearm. The Pauline. This is the part of the armor that's protecting the knee. The Greaves. This is the part of the armor that's protecting the lower leg. The greaves incorporate gyroscopic stabilizers and power units that can magnetize the soles of the armor's boots for combat in zero-g environments. The sabaton. This is the armored boot that's protecting the foot. The backpack power unit. The backpack houses the primary power core for the Space Marine power armor as well as the reserve cells and an emergency solar collector. The Life Signs Monitor Adeptus Astartes power armor contains a suite of life support functions, including an auto equipped with various painkillers, combat stimulants and anti-venoms. The Temperature Regulator Power armor automatically maintains the Space Marine's temperature. Heat is provided by the power core, and thermal buildup can be vented via the backpack's distinctive nozzles. As a result, a space marine can fight anywhere, in the cold vacuum of space, or the raging heart of a volcano, without even noticing the change in temperature. The Nutrient Reservoir Power armor contains a self-replenishing, high-energy liquid food store that can sustain a Space Marine's metabolism without a need for further nourishment. During battle, there is no need for a Space Marine to stop to eat or drink. And this, my friends, has been my introduction of the ubiquitous suit of power armor. There are, of course, many more details to be discussed about power armor, and be sure that I will make future videos explaining all that. These elements include, but are not restricted to, the different marks of power armor, 
as well as more details on the component parts. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an amazing day. The Emperor Protects.